Welcome to Sean's Test Bench. Today we'll be building a home theater PC using this case here I got from Amazon uh, with shipping is $80. Uh, it has a solid aluminum base, a fold down door that reveals uh, two USB 2.0 ports, a microphone in and a headphone out jack and a multi card reader. There's only going to be one slot for an optical drive in this. So that's pretty much all you need on a home theater PC. Let's uh, open it up and take a look inside. Remove the two thumb screws. Get on my trusty little hole there. Okay. I looked up on the internet. There's not a whole lot of documentation on this. It came with one book for the power supply, which, like I said, I'm not going to be using. An 80 millimeter uh, fan guard, which you can see goes on the rear, uh, where you install the 80 millimeter fan to cool the hard drive cage. I will be using that. A bag of screws, and that's primarily it. It came with a Windows Media remote control with the infrared uh, sensor board that it installs in the front of the case. I will be installing this in a server rack in a closet so uh, infrared would not do me any good so I sold it on eBay for $10. Okay let's disassemble and get everything out of here so we can see what we're working with here. Let's get another bowl out. This is your five and a quarter optical drive bay. And as you can see, there's uh, tabs here to install a three and a half inch hard drive underneath. I'm not sure if I will be using that or not. Uh, this is the harness. There is a, a board in the front of this front panel that uh, monitors your fan speeds and your temperatures for your VGA, hard drive, and CPU. I also will not be using that. I use software to do uh, my hardware monitoring. So there's no sense in hooking that up because I'm not going to use it. And I really can't see the display inside a server rack. So this is the power supply that came with it. Uh, it's a Hunkey uh, generic. It's not even 80 plus bronze or. Uh, I'm not going to trust my hardware to a generic power supply. So let's just set that aside for now. We'll have to change that bracket over to the power supply I'm going to be using. Uh, here in a second we'll go over the hardware I'm going to be installing in this case. And here would be my uh, front I.O. connectors. We have a power switch. Uh, Molex power connector, which is for the, uh, it's got an illuminated power switch. It's got a little ring around the power switch. We have a hard drive LED. Uh, USB 2 for the USB ports in the front. We have another USB half plug, which will be for the card reader. And we have our audio, front port audio, HD audio and standard audio connector. So. Let's uh, remove this hard drive rack and get it out of the way. Now, as you can see, there's four screws on the exterior. We will remove. Let's set it down here. As you can see, there's one more on the inside. Let's pull that out. And here's your three, three and a half hard drive bays. It's kind of flimsy, but I believe once you install all the hard drives in it, it should stiffen up quite a bit. I am surprised that it comes with rubber grommets. It's a nice uh, addition to this case. It cuts down on vibration and it supposedly extends the life of your uh, hard drives. So let's pull this out of the way and let's go over the hardware that we're going to be installing in this case. Okay, let's start with the power supply. I am using a 500 watt 
Earth, uh, Antec Earth Watts, 500 watt. It's an EA 500D green. I did a lot of research. I've used their 380s quite a bit, and I really like them. They're tried and true. They're very reliable. They put out their rated watts that they claim to. Uh, they're just very good power supplies. Also, they're nearly silent. Uh, I will be using that in this case because I want to make sure my hardware uh, does not get burned up because of a faulty power supply. And uh, that's pretty much the power supply I'm going to be using. As for the motherboard, we'll be using an ASUS M5A78LM USB 3. Now, I will be using a graphics card with this uh, home theater PC, but I chose a motherboard that has HDI, HDMI out because in case I ever have a faulty graphics card, I could still operate this uh, this uh, server with just the HDMI, uh, with the built-in HDMI. This is, these are very nice boards. They're Asus's latest uh, Micro ATX for FX processors, AMD processors. There's four RAM slots. Uh, you can, uh, if you want to know anything about it, you can uh, look it up online. Like I said, it's the uh, M5A78L-M forward slash USB 3. We'll be using this on this case. To go into this, uh, for the processor, we'll be using an FX 6300 6 core AMD FX unlocked processor. It's just a perfect match for that board. We'll be installing 16 gigabytes of G Skill Ripjaw series uh, memory. We'll be installing an HP Blu ray disc, uh, also with LightScribe multi drive, so that no matter what CD or DVD I would like to play or burn, it will burn. This also does burn the Blu ray disc. For a graphics card, we'll be using a, I had to write it down on actually on this, uh, this is the ATI Radian HD 6570. It's a one gig uh, memory on it. It just, for the size, and, and it requires I mean, no power, they really perform, but this gives me the HDMI out. Also uh, DVI, uh, and it's a dual link DVI. This will be uh, the graphics in this uh, home theater PC. For hard drives, I'll be installing a uh, Toshiba 128GB SSD for the operating system. And this is a Seagate Constellation 2TB drive for the storage. Let's start with uh, getting this power supply bracket off of here and getting it installed on the Earth Watts power supply. Okay. Earthwatt's got plenty of cable. Even their 380s, uh, it's almost like no matter what size case you use, the cables are very long. They reach about anywhere. I'm going to set this aside right here and let's bring the case over and here we go and let's install this power supply in it. Let's get this out of the way and get it installed. Here's the power cord that comes from the front of the case. Get that in there. 
bit of a tight fit. She's gonna go, and there she is. Uh, I noticed you can reach in this side here and turn the switch on or off, so that's a good. I wasn't sure about that when I seen the design of having it inside of a bracket, whether the power switch would have to be turned on before you install it. But uh, you can reach inside and get to the power button. Okay, let's pull these cables out of the way. Same with the front panel connectors. This power supply cable here can get tucked away for now. Okay. Now that I got two fans to go into the side here. Now there's cutouts for 80 millimeter or 120. The problem is, as I found out with the, uh, the few blogs that I found uh, on this, is in order to stall a 120 fan, they have to be 120 by 120 by 15 millimeters. I don't have any of them, so I'm gonna be installing two 80s. Because if the, you try to install the 120 by 25 millimeters, it's in, it's in the way of the motherboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and install two 80s, and if, I, and if I think it needs a little more cooling, you know, down the road I could swap them out. Now, uh, planning ahead, I noticed the uh, ASUS motherboard and one fan header on it. I want to be able to control these fan speeds in the BIOS. I went ahead and soldered and joined these into one three pin connector. Now, I will be uh, installing these so that the air uh, exits the case and not comes in. It'll pull cool air in the top that's vented and exit it to the bottom. So let's go ahead and get them installed. Uh, they included screws. Let's get another ball out here. And there are black fan screws because they screw into the exterior side of the case and I'm sure they want them black and they want them to match the outside of the case. So there's the eight screws for the fans that we're going to install. There's two 80 millimeter fans installed. And like I said, I soldered them into a single pigtail that will connect to the motherboard uh, header that's controlled by the BIOS for the fan speed. Let's turn it back this way. And let's, uh, let's get the motherboard in. First, we'll install the back plate. There we go. There's our motherboard. Okay, let's get our front I.O. connectors hooked up.
Okay, there's my front panel headers. I'll tuck in just really nice, just like that. <coughs> now, let me get my hard drive. Here's the two terabyte Seagate Constellation, which uh, more will be added when they come in the mail. Slides in just like that. Now they pro provided, uh, they look like standard case screws, but they're a little longer, and that's so that they can go through these rubber grommets. go let's install actually before I put this in let me put this uh, rear fan in all right let's install this fan in the back before we install the drive cage we need to fan the grill the screws I'll be using 80 millimeter it's a uh, blue LED not that LED matters it's just uh, what I have so let's uh, Turn it up here so you can see what's going on. And that is installed. Okay, let's slide this out of the way. A little bit here. Let's grab our drive cage. Want these wires tucked under the drive cage so they're not in the way of anything. Let's place the drive cage where it goes. Install the screws for the drive cage. The drive cage is installed. Now let's uh, let's start with cable management. Start running all our power cables. Let's pull this out of the way, and uh, that's what we'll do. Pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and install the uh, the DVD drive in this cage. Okay, I got the base plate. It's just a thin base plate that comes with the that comes on the DVD drive, and I removed it. That way, it won't catch on the front of the aluminum base plate when it. Uh, is ejected and tries to return into the drive. So now we're ready to install this inside the cage. So uh, let's move this uh, tower out of the way for now. And then we'll put it back up here as soon as we get this installed in the cage. Uh, this is the front of the cage here. And there we go. It's installed in the cage. Set that back aside. Let's pull our case back over here. 
Okay. Now, I said I wanted the one that has two optical, or two SATA, and one floppy. The floppy connector is going to connect to the front lights on the case, which are it's just a ring that illuminates around the power switch. I'm tuck that down in there. And I just want to leave one SATA connector out for now to plug into the back of the SATA drive. Okay. Now I had three SATA. Let me keep a hold of there. Keep them out of the way. That goes to the drive cage. There's a spot for three drives. So let's uh, keep that for that. This here though, I would like to plug my fan into. I don't need all this wire. So I'm going to go ahead and tie these up also so that they're out of the way. So let's get some of my tie straps back out here. At least two of them. I'm also going to throw that extra harness that came with the front. I'm going to leave it with this case so I'm just going to drop it down in the very front here so it's out of the way but it's there but it's ever needed or if anybody ever wants to to plug that in I'm going to plug in my fan as far as my uh, Yeah, whatever they call these. SSD. I think I'm just going to take some double sided tape and stick it right here on the side so that it's out of the way of everything. Fill that off. Place it right there. Right on the side of that drive cage. Okay, now we got that in. Uh, let's hook up the power, which I was trying to do before my camera died. Evidently, the batteries don't last quite as long as they say. Okay. Now, let's install the memory processor. Here's the AMD FX6300. Now we have our 16 gigs of uh, G-Skill Ripjaw series. right in front of it that way uh, can keep it cool try to at least you know help help out at least okay processors in let's install the heat sink in the processor
So there we go. That's in. Let's run some SATA cables. Okay, I have almost forgot. I need to install the graphics card. So I need to take this back brace off the case. Let's get our graphics card. Which, like I said, is a ATI Radian HD 6570. Uh, I need to remove one of these PCI slot covers. And it was missing one when they shipped it because it came with an IR infrared uh, in an output plate that fit in a PCI Express slot, which uh, I sold with the remote control on eBay because I'm not going to be using it. So we just line this up with the PCI Express 16 slot and snap it into place. Okay, yep, my camera shut off. Okay, once you snap it in place, put a screw in it, it'll hold it in there. Let's okay, and that's in. I believe we're ready to power this up. Welcome back. Upon powering up the computer, I had a slight problem. The, the graphics card I installed did not uh, display video. So I'm going to send it back. Instead I'm going to install an ASUS HD6450 one gigabyte memory. Comes with VGA, HDMI, and DVI output. So let's go ahead and install that now. Just line it up with the Express 16 slot. Snap it in. Put a screw in the PCI slot cover to secure it. Let's reinstall the brace. Okay, and I think we're ready to power it back up. B. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and uh, hook up a display monitor, uh, put the cover back on it, and I'll get some uh, close-up pictures of it and show the completed uh, build. I'll be right back. Okay, here we are. Windows 8's loaded up. She's running good. 